Hello, everybody. Hi, Cassie, Judy, Janice, Linda, Linda, Kathleen. I don't know. Everybody is coming in. Um, They're waiting for us, so I guess they'll well, come yeah, in fast just, today. Jessica unexpectedly <laughs> couldn't get the camera to recognize, and uh, we had to call the IT guy. <gasps> Luckily, he had just left, so we called, hurry up, come back. I could have figured it out, but I was like, the fastest way. And it's gonna have the ice. She did it. a real good job of not panicking. Yes. <laughs> um it's one of it's one of those days. It's been one of those days for a few weeks now. Yeah, I say this so, is the third um, week of one of those days. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, Patricia. I was just gonna say that. I apologize in advance. I do have gum. I will not be on camera very much today, but my allergies are killing me, so the, I'm trying not to chew my gum on camera right now, um, but for when I'm behind the scenes, I want to try to minimize any amount of, uh, you know, coughing that I have to do. So I'm sorry about that, but since we missed last week, we do not want to put it off another week. No. Um, so we have the camera working. We have the sound working. We have the computer working. Hopefully the sewing machine is working. Hopefully Janet is working. There's no fan noise. <laughs> There's a fan noise. Um, and we can get moving with part three of the sew along. <clears throat> so as you know, last week we're not here. Just to catch you up. The week before, Janet had a little oopsie while she was sewing during um, the sew along, which was great because you see that she's normal. Well, normal. She makes mistakes too. And we had many people tell us, I have the similar issue that Brenda does. Right. And what it is, is Brenda has one shoulder that's got a different slant and a little bit longer than the other. And so just like I always do, I cut out um, the two yokes right side pattern piece right side up and because it is a, uh, a mirror image from one side to the other unless you have customized the pattern to fit somebody with asymmetrical <laughs> shoulders so for those of you who have done that or will do that in the future make sure that just like with sleeves and front you cut a reverse for the inside of the and make sure Take your chalk and mark left and right as you're cutting it out because you could also get it on backwards that way. Then it would really fit funny. Since we could not, we already knew we weren't going to be able to do the next week after you had the oopsie Oh, because of camera. the school opening, yeah. I did come back here and we refilmed part two or lesson two, whatever we're calling it, lesson two. of the sew along. So hopefully you guys saw that. Um, it should be on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. Yep. Um, did we keep the old one too? With the we kept the old one with the. We kept in. the old one on Facebook, but not okay. on YouTube. Yep. So um, the old one with the oopsie. We explained to you what the oopsie was, so it's not really <laughs> worth going back and watching unless you want to laugh at us, and that's fine, too. Yeah. But um, <laughs> the one on YouTube, and it is on Facebook, too, we reshot. It obviously doesn't have, it wasn't live. It doesn't have any all the comments and everything, um, but hopefully you have caught up on that. Somebody did comment, Jess, and say that they really appreciated <laughs> you did that, and although they enjoyed it, they missed uh, hearing us going back and forth. Well, today they're going to be like, I will not miss hearing <laughs> Jessica. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right. Um, yep, 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 yep. Want to tell them about what's on sale this week? Um, Where are you well, at? you want to start that at the beginning? No, I could tell them that after I do my little demo okay. on uh, the muslin. Um, before we get moving, this was from, we did darts on that lesson too, right? Yes. Mary Berg is wondering if you would address the top stitching on the darts. Does the top stitching serve a function other than being decorative? Absolutely it does. Okay, so that dart is just like any seam or anything else. 
it's it can float back and forth so you could painstakingly press it back in place every time you launder it but if you top stitch it a needle width away folded toward the center it will always stay there so um, it's it's about the maintenance of the garment the garment will always look good when everything is top stitched down in place um, it needs the least amount of fussy pressing when it's all tops down, top stitched down in place. And it also secures the seam anytime you top stitch something. It's very, very unlikely that it'll ever come out. So stability or longevity is also a good reason to top stitch. So there you go. A bunch of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> now, I showed that we have a strong internet connection here, but Linda is saying that it keeps freezing. So before we get into any serious demo situation, I just want to make sure. I mean, we kicked everyone out of the building <laughs> that could possibly even think about using our Wi-Fi or our internet in order to make sure. So let's see if anybody else is having a problem. <laughs> well, I don't know how I feel about that, Deb. What? You look like you feel miserable. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not completely miserable, uh, but I'm mostly just like holding back because I don't want to be coughing in your ears. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd be rather be laying down, but <laughs> say that for most days. Um, <laughs> but thank you. Um, so let's gets you want to get started on part three since now we've wasted all this time. well I'm it's going, not a waste but. I'm going to vary for a few minutes from um, the construction lesson and if you read the newsletter phew, newsletter I have uh, a few tips about getting the best fit before you even cut out your garment let alone sew it and I know a lot of people who are watching this right now have not started so these tips uh, I think are really important and I'm also getting a lot of people sending in pictures of their muslins and unfortunately I have to write to them and tell them I can't judge your muslin the way you sent it to me. So I want to go over the tips on how to uh, just approach the muslin and um, how to mark it up a little bit and then I have a really slick tip on um, the rounded back issue that some of us have. <coughs> now you want to do that on this? Yes. Okay. So we're going to move over to the dress form so I can uh, speak directly to the, the trips, tips and tricks. Alright. Bear with oopsie daisy. Am I moving here? I gotta see this. You're gonna move over here. You're not gonna be able to see yourself. Just so you know. That's okay. I don't want to see myself. Okay. All right, watch that. You're gonna have to pick that up. Okay. Well, you kind of want to pick it. I will pick it up later. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? <laughs> yeah, I mean, All this right. is as ready as we're getting. Here. All right. So, um. Anyway, we went over uh, fitting a woven bodice a year ago this last spring, somewhere around March or April. So those episodes are available in, uh, in the playlists um, on the YouTube channel as well as in the archives on Facebook. So as we've been going into this uh, so along, I've been saying, hey, send me your muslins if you want me to help critique them. Well, I well imagine that many of you did not see that episode um, or don't remember all the tips in that episode. So what I'm receiving is pictures of people who have taken all the pieces in muslin and sewn it all together. And then they send it to me and they say, well, what do I do? Well, I don't know because we need a few things in order for me to even uh, understand the fit through pictures. So, first of all, you need to mark the seam allowance. And I want you to mark it, I keep telling you, in Sharpie. And the reason is, is that I hope you can see this. 
But from a photograph, I need to be able to see where your seam allowance is ending. For example, here I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And I know this shoulder is going to fit me because that seam is right on the shoulder. So I know that's going to fit. So we want to look at the seam allowances. So mark those on the neckline and on the arm side. Do not sew up anything before you start to fit. So you're going to start fitting with the shoulders. But before you do that, I want you to mark the center front. And you see I've marked the center front on both the right and left and then overlapped them right on the line. So I know this is exactly the way to lay when it's on the body. So that I can look to see if there's any pulling or any other problems. Um, now let's take a look at the back. The back, I've also marked the center. And of course this one has a yoke. And the problem I have here that I want to address is that this has a rounded back. This particular person or dress form uh, has a rounded back. And this is what happens with your garments. And those of you who are like me, you recognize that. And what happens is it kicks out so far that it actually ends up shorter in the back than it does in the front. And when you're standing profile to someone, that's really obvious. Plus, it's not comfortable. I don't think it's comfortable. I, I keep wanting to yank on it. So, we went over a few tips in the past, a couple years ago, where we split this and brought it down, but it caused us to have to put in every garment that we make for a rounded back, a seam down the center back. And sometimes you just don't want that. Well, it occurred to me as I was making up a muslin um, in a very similar to what we're doing today, but slightly different, for myself, how I could make that work. And so what I did, you'll see that I've got this yoke folded on the seam allowance. And then on the back itself, I marked the seam allowance. But I also, instead of cutting it on the cutting line, I cut extra fabric. And you're gonna see why. So, and I'll, that'll make more sense in a minute. All right, so then I only stitched about two inches on each side, two to two and a quarter inches on each side, along the normal seam allowance. In this case, it's three eighths. Then, this would all be loose right now. Then I just pulled it down and I figured, I, I think I pulled it down to like an inch. And now look at how the back hangs. See the difference? We've just given this an arc on the back. So we've rounded it up to, so when you pull it down, the minute that those lines on the bottom get straight and the whole, see we have two horizontal lines and the whole thing now doesn't kick out, it lays flat against the body and it looks nice, that's where you want to mark your muslin and that's going to be your new stitching line. Okay? And again, cut this way up. So you've got lots of fabric there. And then when you pull that down, you may only need a half an inch, you may need an inch, you may need an inch and a quarter. It depends on your body. But then you'll get this nice, flat, straight look. So again, the only thing you need to change when you're cutting out your muslin is that center back and just, it's cut on the fold, so just mark up maybe two inches and then it's come along the seam allowance for about two and a quarter inches and then round it up that extra two inches and then stitch it together on either side and then you'll be able to adjust it. Now I'm going to tell you, I did this on my own. I didn't have anybody here to do it with. So here's how I did it. I took a picture of myself in the mirror from the back and pulled this down until it laid straight. That's not the ideal way to do it, but it worked. So if you have no one around, which I hear a lot, uh, or no one that you really think would be helpful, then that might be a way to do it too. But it just, it works like a dream. And this is, how, the reason I thought of this is this is how a lot of men's shirt patterns are made. 
and I started out making a lot of men's shirts in my early career, well, they will be rounded because a man's shoulder blades are often more pronounced and they need that extra. So then they will round that out. And then you do need to make sure that this piece goes against the feed dog because it'll need a little bit of easing. Now the fact that I only came up one inch here, probably less than a quarter inch of ease in here, maybe an eighth. This isn't going to be much. But be mindful of it so you get it in even, <coughs> and then it will look, look nice and hang nice. If you're having any trouble with the front of your garment and getting it to hang nice straight, then maybe you want to put a couple of horizontal lines across the front of your bodice. So we can see, especially if you're asymmetrical, so we can see because these lines should always be completely straight and so should your horizontal lines. So the minute they start to ripple or pull up one way or the other, that's what gives me the clue as to what needs to be changed or fixed. But before you send me a muslin, make sure that you clearly mark those lines so I can see them. Do not put a sleeve in for the first set of pictures. Send me a picture from here to here. I want it, I don't care if you want to cut your head off, if you're having a bad hair day, I don't care. But I want to see at least below the garment and above the garment. Don't shorten it like this. And then I've, I've lost my perspective and I need that. Then I want a picture sideways so that I can see if your side seam is falling straight and I can see if your shoulder seam is in the right place. So that's what this profile picture is for. And then, of course, a back picture. And, um, and again, give me the full length. I mean, sometimes people are sending me pictures and it's like half the garment. And they're saying, well, what's wrong with this area? Well, I don't know because I have to see this and this to know why is it pulling or why is it hanging uh, not straight. Uh, the darts, that's another issue that a lot of people are having trouble with with the everybody. So I want to point this out. Now this does not have the fisheye dart. So on the everybody's, they have a fisheye dart. Okay, I'm going to get real personal with my dress form. This is the apex or the nipple. Your dart should go straight up pointing at that. It should be a straight line or a straight arrow with a point to that nipple, but it should never come near the nipple. It should be one inch below it. I'm getting Muslim pictures where the dart's going right up past the nipple. And it, and it particularly looks odd. Now in a Muslim, you can't tell as much, but if you did that in a garment, it's not going to look right. So the idea is below the nipple. If your dart is over here or your dart is over here, you have to move it. You just have to move it, but you just move it horizontally the distance that you need to to hit that apex. All right, let's see if there's any questions, Jess. Mm -hmm. Ginger says, thanks for the great cutting hint for the back adjustment. Okay. Um, I don't have a question, but I do have a couple people saying that they're having problems with the freezing and others saying that they're not. I have a strong connection on my end. So I just want to recommend if people are still having problems with it freezing to refresh the video. Try refreshing it or trying on a different device. I know some people have been having problems with their iPads and I have no idea why. But I just wanted to give that hint since I don't see a problem on our end and I know that other people are not having a problem. So I want to apologize if I give that, that hint out to see if that helps. It, it could be your server, your internet connection, anything. So um, we don't have a lot of people <coughs> having that problem, just a couple. Yeah. Okay. And here's the thing. If it's freezing for you, it's not freezing for us. So when we play it back or we post it or post yeah. it on a YouTube, then you won't have any freezing. No. So, I appreciate people letting us know because yes. then I can check our speed and see, but right now it looks good. So um, I don't have any questions if you wanted to move. 
Okay. Yeah. So I want to see those muslins and I want to help you. So review those videos or um, uh, take advantage of this week's sale. And Jessica, you have uh, one of the DVDs there. And I've got one over here. And if you look at the newsletter, you'll see. But these are Connie Crawford's um, videos. Am I too close? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. So these are on getting a good fit and making a muslin and then how to true the muslin up. So these are excellent and they will also help you. So you have lots of options. You could go back and watch the series on YouTube or on Facebook, or you could own your own copy of Connie's um, complete. This one is custom fitting and truing, <coughs> and this one is custom bodice. And they're both 20% off this week. So the code is in the newsletter, but the actual code to get 20% off is fit well. All together. All together. F-I-T-W-E-L-L. -L. Correct. All right, so I'll follow Janet. Hopefully, I won't fall <laughs> over back to the sewing machine. Okay. Oh, golly. Oh, golly gee. Okay, so today we want to, uh, we should be, you should be at the same place I am before you start putting your collar stand on and putting your collar together. So you should have um, your shoulder seams in, your yoke is completely attached, and top stitch. So we've top stitched the shoulder seam as well as the back of the yoke. Now, one thing for those of you who are doing, uh, using lawn, and even if you're not, uh, you may want to lengthen your stitch length. I found the first time I stitched across this, I hadn't done my test properly, and I did it at a three, and I didn't like the way it looked. It wasn't quite puckering, but it wasn't nice. So I switched up to a four. So I'm top stitching with a four and it's laying very nice. So we've got that. You've got your uh, side backs in and top stitched. And I surged those seams before I top stitched them. So I stitched them at the 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then I did a three thread surge along the edge. Pressed the seams toward the center back and top stitched a needle width away. Before you did all that construction, you would have made both of your front plackets as well. And all of that is in your booklet that came with your kit or your pattern. And let's see where we're at. So these are the things that we accomplished last week, starting with page uh, 9. So we went through 9, 10. You see we did the, the dart here. Um, going all the way through page 12 and 13. So 13 is where we uh, apply all the top stitching. So now we're going to be starting on page 14 today and we're going to be making our collar first. So I'll put my shirt aside. <clears throat> now Two types, we're using two types of fabric in this class, and I know, or this sew along, and I know that some of you have the lawn. So if you have the lawn, you should have interfaced both of your collar pieces with the light and stable, a very lightweight interfacing. And make sure that you trim the tips out. And the reason we do that. And we only do that when the point is a very strong angle because trying to get seam allowance all into that little spot after we turn it becomes very bulky. So if we've taken the interfacing out, it helps a little. Okay, if you ha are using uh, basic cotton shirting or cotton sheeting, then one of your collars is going to be a firmer interfacing like our medium firm and then the under collar or the collar facing will be in the lightweight. 
So whenever you use a firmer interfacing, it always that's the one that faces the public. So you always need to be cognizant of which one is which. Specifically, because once you sew this collar and turn it, it will be stitched together. So you won't know which one is the one that ha uh, belongs facing the public. So what you might want to do is just take your chalkener and make some kind of mark on your collar. The one that has the stronger interface. Either one. Just so you can be uh, aware after you've stitched it all together which one goes up and which one goes down. It's a minor uh, difference. But to me it makes a better collar. If I had the whole collar put together and put it on the shirt and all top stitched down and that's when I realized I had put it upside down, I don't think I would take it apart. It's not that big a difference. But we're going for not perfection, we're going for excellence. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to stitch the collar at a quarter inch seam allowance. And this will be a three stitch length for me. Now you can dial it down. Um, there's nothing wrong with that specifically on the collar so that you can get, dial it down a stitch just so that you can get very precise here. But um, what I'm going to do alright, just before the quarter and I think I'll dial this down to a two. I'm going to come across one stitch. And now I'm going to stitch it at the quarter. And the reason I did that rather than trying to come to a point, when a collar is such got such a severe point, it's so difficult to get it perfect. So um, this is you don't have to do it this way. If you have another way, if you have there's a dozen different ways to get that point to come out sharp. And if that's what you desire, you use those methods. There's nothing wrong with them. But in this case, for especially for beginner shirt makers, this is um, a nice <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, a nice way to keep it good and uh, simple. So we're gonna stitch this, remember, thumb under, fingers on top, left hand is guiding, but not going past the needle. Okay, so there's our collar. Now we want to trim this off. Oh, hold on, let me get to you there. Okay. So I'm going to trim this off. I'm hoping I'm not. I can't really see that that well right here. Hang on, let me get my magnifier on. All right. I don't want to cut the stitching. All right, so I've cut that off, but. And then this is how you know whether you've cut enough off. Because you don't want to cut more than you need to or less than you need to. So let's just take a look. When we turn this right side out, look what's going to happen. That's where that all that seam allowance has to go. And do you see how much it's overlapping? That's going to create a lump. So what I want to do is come back in here and take some more of this out. Don't get crazy. You don't want to have it left down to threads. But, as you can see now, it's going to fit in there and not overlap, or if it does overlap, it's not overlapping by much. So that's how you want to trim your corner. And again, if you have a different method that works well and gives you a beautiful collar uh, point, because I know several of them, I just can't uh, 
present them all in one sew along. So for this sew along, this is the way we're doing it. All right, now we're going to go to the ironing station and work with the point presser. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, <clears throat> I'll follow you over there. All right, just watch that cord. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use a point presser, and this is so, mm, this makes such a nice collar by using a point presser that if you make garments with collars, you won't want to live without this if you don't already have one. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay that seam right along the top there, and I'm going to press it open while it's on the wood. And what the wood does, well, first of all, the shape of this allows us to get in there and press this open, but the wood also absorbs the moisture as we go across the seam, which helps it lay flat longer. Okay, so that's nice and flat. And then we'll get the end. And anytime you want something, whether it's a facing or in this case a collar, to turn exactly on that seam allowance, then you want to press the seam open before turning. So like if you're putting a facing down the front, you should press that seam open before you turn it to the side. And it will want to fall right on the seam because it's been pressed open. Let's see how nice and flat that lays. Now this is called a point presser. It's made out of a hard wood. Tailors use these and have for 100 years or more. Um, I, I wouldn't live without them. You might even have noticed I have four. I don't need four. Um, hey, bear with me while I go get a point turner. I left it at the, uh, oh God. Do you have more pressing? Yeah. Uh, yes. I know. Okay. Point turners, there's lots of options. Probably for 20 years before I found this little inexpensive plastic point turner, I used chopsticks, wooden chopsticks that you get at a Chinese restaurant. And they work perfectly fine for turning the corners, but there's lots of different options, but it does help to have something. So we're gonna turn our collar right side out. And when we do, we're going to use the point turner in order to get everything poked out nice. But we're not going to shove this in there. We're gonna put it in there and then we're gonna massage the fabric over the point. And that way you have less likely to go right through the end of your collar. And I know there's a few of you out there going, well, I've done that before. And so just make sure you just massage that over there and you get a nice point. Just that easy. Now, that this is right side out. See how fluffy it is? Because that seam's been pressed open. Get this stuff out of your way. So now we're going to use a clapper in order to get it to lay perfectly flat. Now the clapper is made out of a hardwood as well. And it too absorbs the moisture, but it does one more thing and that is flatten out the seam at the same time. So I'm gonna just lay this, and it's gonna to want to fall right on the seam in most cases. And then we're just gonna add some steam and some pressure, and then come right in
with your clapper. Now, look at the difference. And the reason we want this to be flat is because we're going to top stitch this. And if you have a smooth, flat, as flat as it can be surface to top stitch on, you'll do a much better job top stitching. So we just want to come along and finish the collar. <clears throat> And you see how nice and flat that is. It's going to be really, really easy to top stitch this. I can hear the oohs and ahs. Oh, you can? Okay. You're coming back, right? Yes, I'm coming back to the sewing <laughs> machine. I just want to adjust one little, press this just a little bit more right here. Okay. And there's lots of places a clapper can come in handy, but just think whenever you want to seem to be perfectly flat or you're going to be top stitching, so you, that's why you want it perfectly flat, that clapper is going to come in handy. And it's funny, I've uh, been using a clapper for 30 years and it's considered a tailor's tool, but the other day I'm on Facebook and I see that it's now become a quilter's tool and it's called the quilter's clapper. It looks exactly like the tailor's clapper, and it's probably made out of the same wood, but quilters are starting to use it to get nice flat surfaces, uh, get their seams nice and flat. <coughs> so now all you're going to do is stitch around your collar at a needle width away. Now I'm going to switch mine to four. Remember to do that if you want to, remember to change your stitch length for your top stitching if that is what you're doing. All right, so we're just gonna top stitch right down and this time we're going to come right to a point. We're not gonna come over that one stitch. And remember, we're doing this a needle width away, which is very, very close to the edge. Not on the edge, but very close to it. Now, this is where Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't, but I know my instruction book will tell you to do this, and that is to base these edges together. So um, make sure that you can still see your marks. Now in my case, I cannot, and I need to have that center mark. So let me see if I clipped it. I did not clip it, so I'm going to clip it now because I'm going to sew this shut, and I do want to know where my center is. Always mark the center of everything. Now make sure when you base these edges together that it's within the seam allowance so you don't have to worry about taking it out. So stay real close to the edge and just hold those edges together. Okay, so here's our collar. Now I want you also to notice that my collar matches at both ends. And the reason that that is, is because when I lay the pattern out, I make sure whatever motif, pattern, stripe, plaid that I'm using ends up in the same place at both tips. Because this is what faces the public, those tips. And if these are off, it looks really, really bad. Okay, so that's, we're going to set our collar aside. we we'll probably press it one more time too, get it nice and flat. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the collar stand on the neckline, and that's where we're going to stop today. Um, but where did my shirt go? I'll put right it over here. Brenda wants you to know that your thread has come out of the thread guide. You're right. Thank you very much. That is <laughs> not a good stitch when it does that. Thank you. You guys are always looking out for us. Oh, it came out of the needle too, Brenda. Well, the, no, that's Brenda's fault. It was fine until... <laughs> <laughs> and my good friend, Jim Cully, sent me 
a needle threader. But I, oh. haven't, I haven't practiced with it yet, Jim, so I'll use it next week. But he said he saw me struggling, and of course, it is a little more difficult to thread with a fine thread and a size 10 needle. Uh, he said he he has the same problem where it pops out of the <clears throat> needle, so he that's what he uses. So he sent me one, and that was so nice. Come on, get in there, you. <laughs> I might have to practice with it today. I know you left your. I left my magnifier on the other side of the room. One of her many. No, many there's one right behind you, because I put two over there. I was going to say one of your many, many magnifiers, but there's not one here. Do you want it? Yeah, I got it. Of course. Well, you know, well, I'll put this right here. You can be blind and thread it. Well, almost blind, <laughs> and thread a needle because you know there's a groove right there. So if you can get that thread in that groove, then you can just move down until it pops through the hole. Anyway, that's one of my little tips. All right, so when we do this collar stand, it is the same as the collar in the interfacing <coughs> world. So there's going to be on the lawns, we're using only the lightweight interfacing. But on the shirting or uh, sheeting, then you're going to use the uh, lightweight in the facing, which is what I'm putting in right now, and the firmer one in the actual collar stand that's going to face the public. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, Amy, this is a light. Oh. She's wondering. What is that thing? It's a light um, that Janet used to make the bed there brighter. Where did that pink chalk go? Oh, there it is. All right. So I just, before I start, I want to mark the seam allowance on the tip of this. And the seam allowance on here is a quarter. Mm -hmm. No, I'm good. Cassie, she did recover these chairs. Oh. She likes the fabric. One weekend I had bought, not one weekend, but I had bought a lot of different pieces of home deck fabric for various projects that never happened. And one weekend my husband and I recovered all the office chairs, but they were all different because I only had one, one piece per chair. So then everybody came in on Monday and I, okay, pick your chair mm -hmm. that you like best. All right, so we wanted to mark this at a, at a quarter of an inch because we need that seam allowance to be uh, past the edge of the placket. So this line I'm putting right at the edge of the fabric. Do you see? Mm -hmm. I see. I All right, see. going up there, and that's where we're going to start at a quarter inch seam allowance. Cat, oh, Cassie's there. I want to see a picture of Cassie in that velvet dress. <laughs> that is going to be fun. All right. All right, need to go back to a three. And let's see. We had to remark these. All right, quarter inch. And remember. To hang on to that bottom layer so it doesn't go through faster than the top layer. Find your marks. So like here's our shoulder mark. And then we're going to just trust that it's going to fit. Cassie says that you had asked her about the dress. It's Morticia Adams. I know. Oh, okay. Yes, I know. She said she made it for Halloween. All right, so we got to that dot, yep. Now we're gonna come back and find the center back. <coughs> and I have a slight little clip there, and here's my center back mark. And that's where it goes, thumb under, fingers on top. And then I'm going to stop there and find my next mark, which is my shoulder mark. Put that in there. 
So do you see how we're doing this? Now part of the reason we can do this is because it's a quarter inch seam allowance and because we have a flat bed around the machine. So I have uh, the opportunity to keep everything flat and smooth and moving along and no worries. Okay, so now we just need to come back here and do the quarter. Okay. Now, if you are not ready to give up your pins, then pin each, pin the center, pin the shoulder, and maybe pin one end and then stitch it together holding it like I've shown you and then you'll be on your way. I was talking to somebody in a class the other day and I said it's just like raising your training wheels. You know don't just give up use less pins and the, as you move along you'll be able to use less and less. Now remember, I sewed this <coughs> to the inside, not the outside. So let me just review again. If you are making a lawn, it doesn't matter which one you put in because you're using light and stable all over. But if you are making a shirting or a sheeting, then you want the softest one on the inside and the firmest on the outside. Mm -hmm. So we will finish up. I'm sorry we got a late start today, but I did want to give you that tip about muslins because I know so many of you are still wanting to get your muslin fit properly before you cut out your shirt. So I threw that in today. So um, this is as far as we're going to get, but it's a good start and next week we'll finish the collar and start on the sleeves. So remember, this is on the wrong side. Let me turn this right side out here. All right. Keep that in mind because your, your natural instinct is going to be to want to sew it to the right side first. So don't follow your natural instinct. All right, Janet, I have a question for you. Okay. Don't you have a video on the pressing tools? Yes, and it's um, under tips and techniques. Uh, it's a playlist. Okay, on I will try to find it and add it to the comments because we got a little bit uh, far away from the microphone. I think oh, when no. you went to the ironing board, um, I think it just got low. Um, and then we'll show you. Uh, I'll link that video so people can see. If yes, to... and that will give you everything and more than what I talked about there. So you'll understand pressing tools even at a at a better um, better depth. So yes, and don't forget about the sale twenty percent off those two DVDs from Connie with the code. Fitwell, F-I-T-W-E-L-L. -L. And I do want to remind them that we do have the pressing tools. And on our website, if you have ha if you have no wooden pressing tools and you want to buy the bundle, it is discounted uh, at a nice rate if you want to buy the pressing tool bundle. But we have it all separately as well. Okay. All right. If you guys have any questions while you're making your everybody shirt um, after watching this, uh, you can email Janet at uh, Islander Sewing at Comcast.net. Um, that's the best way to get a fast reply from Janet. So if you have any questions, Islander Sewing at Comcast.net. Absolutely. And again, I want to help you with your muslin. Don't put the sleeve in for the first set of pictures. And then once we're sure that the arm sign, everything's fitting nice, then I have you put the sleeve in and we'll double check that. And then you'll be good to go. So those of you who want to get that extra special fit, I'm here for you. And um, so is Connie. <laughs> so either way, we're here to help you. All right. So we will see you guys back here next Tuesday um, at 2.
hopefully right at two. Yeah, <laughs> with no coughing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great week and a nice holiday.